Hello again, this is Skip McCauley, Victor Echo 6, Bravo, Golf Tangle. I received a lot of emails, and people ask me quite often, what are all the monitors for in my shack? So I thought I'd uh, give a breakdown on this part of the operations here and how uh, the whole auto tracking for the moon and dish adjustment works. The first screen is the amplifier status and control monitor. I use it uh, for monitoring the sequencer events, the uh, controlling of the water coolant for the big ramps inside the shack, and also for things going on and the status of the amplifiers that are mounted up at the feed horn, depending on what uh, frequency and band we're using. This monitor is pretty self-explanatory. I have a small tower out by the dish with uh, two cameras up there. One's a infrared for night use, which is what you're seeing right now. Another one's a, uh, a large one with a, with a telescopic lens. I uh, use it just to keep an eye on the dish and see what's going on. The uh, night vision works really good at uh, night and I uh, have extra, extra infrared lamps for uh, better illumination. Okay, this is the main monitor that um, I'm going to be uh, talking about here later. It's the uh, monitor that uh, I control the dish mainly from, either with by mouse control on a slider or pres pressing buttons up and down that give me 0.1 or 1 degree increments and also selecting into auto tracking and using offsets for uh, getting the dish peaked right on the, on the moon. Uh, this of course is a NOVA program displayed here. I use it to uh, supply me with the moon data for tracking. Now this upper monitor is the uh, screen that shows me different things for the status of the dish outside. Uh, motor currents, uh, temperatures, uh, different voltages, etc, uh, etc. Et of course this monitor is pretty self-explanatory, uh, the band scope from the TS-2000. Uh, this shows the next main part of the dish control. It is the EME dish shelf or the PIC shelf. Uh, you'll understand why I call it that because I'm a heavy user of PIC microcontrollers. Now from this panel I can move the dish manually. It's a little more cumbersome than using the uh, Visual Basic screen, but it's the uh, another way of doing it. It's from this panel here that uh, the inside control talks to the outside electrical enclosure where there is again more PIC microcontrollers. As you can see, there's a lot of cabling, uh, multiple serial cables coming and going. Uh, most of this also is for controlling and monitoring the amplifiers, which I'll talk about in some other video. This is a block diagram of the control system from the uh, Nova Tracking and Visual Basic Computer through all the picks to the outside electrical enclosure where the motors and the uh, position encoders are. The positioning feedback for the azimuth drive off the new slew gear is this uh, castle tooth sprocket I built which uses two proximity switches and uh, gives me a quadrature signal back. The elevation position is done by a 300 pulse per revolution quadrature encoder which is connected to the elevation axis through a 3 to 1 chain ratio link. The way I come up with a number in degrees for these encoders is that I don't count each pulse. What I do is count the transition of each pulse. So in other words, the bottom of the pulse is count one, the rise is count two, the top is count three, and then the fall is considered count four. The encoder pulses are sent to the shack through a long cable and then fed through an LM311 voltage competitor for pulse shaping. This is then fed to the PIC12F675 and all its job is to do is count these pulses and keep track of them and nothing else. The encoder on the slew gear works the same way. Only problem is with the uh, amount of turns the worm works with the revolution of the dish. Uh, to get a proper display I have to divide the number by 1.133 which quite gives me uh, a few extra decimal points. Of course all these control wires and data lines go through uh, electrical enclosure box which is mounted at the dish. Inside this enclosure are two more PIC control boards. They take the control lines from the shack and convert it to serial data which gets fed to the two pulse width modulation boards which drive the motors for variable speeds. 
Other lines that go into these two control boards are the end stop switches to prevent the dish from traveling too far. There's one more pick board in there which takes all the uh, various voltages for uh, different circuits, the motor currents, uh, temperatures from inside the enclosure and outside the enclosure and converted the serial data to be fed back to the shack for the data screen on the Visual Basic program. So next is to show you how it all works. This is the uh, picture of the main control screen. Uh, first thing you have to do is set up a few parameters and a setup part of it all. The first thing I select is the Nova Engage. What this does is connect the uh, DDE transfer from Nova into this program for the moon data. Next is the high speed enable switch. Uh, this part of the function is controlled from this program. These other buttons set up the lead time for the high speed to engage either going to the target or leaving the target. And also the buttons for the lead time for when I hit the stop button for the motor to coast and not stop suddenly. This is the data screen. Nothing is displayed until the power is turned on to the enclosure outside at the dish. You'll notice that there is no preamp or preamp relay voltage displayed on the uh, status screen. Those switches are on the uh, control rack of the equipment themselves. I'll turn them on next. You'll see the uh, preamp voltage come on and then the preamp relay voltage come on. So now it's time to show you how it all works. We'll uh, go back over to the main EME dish drive control screen and activate things. Next I take my mouse and move over to the elevation slider and move it over till I get a desired elevation of 31 degrees. By using the up by one degree buttons I decided to move it up to desired elevation of 34 degrees. You'll notice the high speed engaged icon came on and uh, the status screen I've superimposed on top of the uh, main panel here so you can see the status screen at the same time and it's showing the elevation high speed it is engaged by this uh, text message on there. If you look up in the top left hand you'll see the elevation motor is drawing roughly 2.2 amps. The dish representation in the drawing will increment up every five degrees as the uh, system is moving the dish up in real time. We're within 5 degrees of our target of 34 degrees, so the system has switched down from high speed to medium speed. Now the dish is within 2 degrees of its target of 34 degrees and it switched to low speed. So it has reached its target of 33 degrees and everything is shut down. Moving the dish in azimuth is the same as what we just did with the elevation control. So I didn't want to waste time uh, just repeating it all. For the next show and tell, I'm going to show how the system gets configured to get set up to track an object. In this case, we're going to use the sun as the target. For this, I'll be using my homemade noise meter, which is connected between the IF output of the 13 centimeter transverter and the TS2000 Kenwood radio. With taking the mouse and clicking the manual control icons, the system is switched over to the auto tracking function. First thing you'll notice is the desired text windows which were displaying the actual dish position has now switched over to what Nova is indicating as the uh, positioning for the sun. The azimuth didn't have far to go. It's already locked in, but the elevation still has a few degrees to crawl up to what Nova is telling it to for uh, tracking the sun at 12.3 uh, degrees. So as you can tell in the noise meter that uh, we have no indication of solar noise whatsoever. So I start clicking on the uh, 0.1 degrees increment buttons and you'll see the uh, text window for the offset 
increase or decrease and uh, we're going to peak it until we get uh, some kind of a noise indication. The noise meter is uh, switched to select the 20 dB full scale meter selection and we're going to peak up and down until we uh, get a maximum. What this is actually doing is correcting for mechanical errors in my dish mount or timing. Uh, I think mainly mechanical errors. Nothing's perfect. So the elevation is pretty well peaked. I'm going to tweak the uh, azimuth drive a little bit and see what we get. So that's about as much as we're going to get out of her. Uh, the dish will continue to attract the sun now with these offsets set in there and be fairly accurate. So that just about wraps it up. Uh, I hope you didn't find all this too boring. And uh, once again, thanks for checking in on my nerd channel. 73s.